So this past weekend, John Henson was approaching a jewelry store in the suburbs of Milwaukee. Um, to Your hometown? My hometown uh, to buy a watch. Recently just signed a big contract extension, um, number 14 overall pick a couple of years ago. And UNC? UNC. But what happened next was, was tragic. The store shut down the lights. They closed the door. They locked the door. About 30 minutes early. <laughs> and, and proceeded to call the police because they thought he was some type of burglar. The cops searched his car. The, they asked him, where did he get this car? Even though it was part of a package uh, endorsement, pa deal, endorsement yeah. deal mm -hmm. from Chevy. But it goes to show you that, show you that no matter who you are, you can still be racially profiled no matter what. Now, for those that don't know where, uh, where the store is located, it's kind of the equivalent of, I would say Maple Grove. Uh, that's what I would say the equivalent to it is, is Maple Grove. It's a highly Caucasian area. Um, some African Americans go there, but it's different because there has been a lot of racial tension in that area before. It saddens me personally. First, he's seven foot. What seven footer do you know would be dumb enough to rob a jewelry store in that particular area, then come back? Second, it's disheartening when someone of African American descent can't go to a jewelry store just to get a watch they don't know that he just signed a $44 million extension. That type of business is just bad for, it's bad on a whole, whole lot of levels. Bad on a whole lot of levels. Uh, bad on a whole lot of levels. We'll just leave it there. A lot of takeaways from this. It's, it's obvious how, how we feel about the situation. Granted, not to make light of, of a situation, but you've heard the joke when an African American robs something, his profile is anywhere from four feet four to seven feet 11. It can range from anywhere. But I mean, if we could just bring it back to you, Mar, because I know this hits very, very close to home. And Milwaukee is one of the most, most segregated cities in the nation. It's, in, not, in my... it's not one of the most. It is the most segregated city in America. And, and things haven't changed. I mean, you have the north side where a lot of African Americans stay, south side is where a lot of Hispanics stay. West side is kind of a combination mm. of white Jews and Asians. Mm. And the east side, you got a combination of, you know, black and Hispanics. So when you get outside the city into the suburb, suburban area, then that's where a lot of racial tension happens. So to see that this occurred, it's not anything new. It's not, I mean, it's a surprise, but it's not anything new uh, for me. So I, I just don't understand it. I don't know what can happen, but I think it's a, a valuable teaching tool for someone um, of younger age to understand what happened. I don't think that he should have went to social media to do so. I think he should have went to uh, a grander stage to talk about him being racially profiled, an article in the newspaper, um, him being on the Fox TV station down there, or ABC or NBC or CBS, to talk about what really happened. I'm glad that the Bucks organization stood behind him. Awesome. Um, about what was going on and didn't leave him out there to drive by himself. But I don't know what else to say about it, man. I really don't. There's not much else to say. Appreciate your input. Uh, I think he was right to go to social media. You discussed the the huge TV stations come get the story. They're going to come get the story regardless, OK? Social media, the. The nice thing about social media, we discussed the ugly last week in terms of crazy fans badgering uh, professionals and college players, mm -hmm. but it's a way to connect to these players, okay? And so it's a chance for them to let their voice be heard and get it out there uh, for what's going on inside their lives. So, man, by all means, put it on social media. Let's, let's talk about this jewelry store and, uh, I mean, don't shop there. You know, people are going to continue to shop there, but. You know, people are going to continue to shop there, but I, I would hope that this is a, a big enough stage to say maybe we should examine the, examine our practices and that African Americans and people that used to shop there should make a stand and say we're not going to give them our dollar 
and really put an imprint in their wallet because that's the only way that they're going to understand and listen. Money talks. Money talks.